Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Food Fiend. And this weekend, I wanted to go check out the new Foodland Farms here in Pearl City. It's been open for about two weeks or so. And I just wanted to see what it was about. I really like the Ala Moana location. Um, this was the old Babies R Us. And when you enter, there's a whole bunch of prepared foods. There's an Okazuya. There's pre-made bentos, mochis, a salad bar with lots of fresh greens, and also some hot food items. $8.99 a pound right now. And also when you enter, there's a whole array of different cheeses, which is awesome. Here's another look of the hot food area. And then they also have some sandwiches, pizzas, burritos, and sushi in the other kiosks where they make it fresh. And over here they have different salads and dips and some of them are unique to Hawaii and interesting such as salmon dips, kamaboku dips, there's so many noodles and other local items. This area has the bakery section with freshly baked breads and donuts and other sweet baked items such as cupcakes and cakes. This is the produce section. I found it rather small, but there's a wide array of things there. And here are some of the baked goods. These are not baked by um, Foodland. Obviously they're Ted's Bakery Pies, which they sell. And then these are Foodland items, cupcakes, cakes, parfaits, etc. This part I found interesting and it's kombucha on tap, which you can get by the glass. And then there's also some lion coffee on tap, some nitro brew and also regular hot brewed lion coffee in different flavors. This area has a whole shelf of different dried fruits, dried bananas, dried pineapples, dried strawberries, all kinds of fruits, and also dried nuts such as cashews, pecans, butter toffee peanuts, and also some boutique items and different candies. There's also a wide array of different types of wines and also hard liquor spirits. Maybe about five or six shelves worth of different wines and hard liquor. Around the store in some random shelves you'll find some local items such as these Maui shortbread cookies and then this is the hard liquor spirits area of the store there's different types of soft drinks and some that I haven't seen in other stores here locally so pretty wide selection of sparkling waters and soft drinks On this side is a small shelf of some single beers. A lot of them are microbrews. Um, there's a selection of a lot of local microbrews such as Maui Brewing Company, 
Kona Brewing Company, etc. Honolulu Beer Works. And then the other national microbreweries such as Sierra Nevada, Deschutes, and uh, some other small name brands. You can buy a six pack of a mixed beer for $10.99 pretty good deal if you want to just try different uh, pale ales and stuff and you're not sure if you want to buy the whole pack I find that a good idea and then on the other side there's a big refrigerator with more microbreweries and this time around the world so you've got a whole bunch of selections from American microbreweries to Japanese to different hard waters which I've never seen before tonics and um, even hard kombucha, that was interesting. I've never seen that before. And of course, if you turn to the other end, you have your regular beers from America, such as Budweiser and the big name labels, Coors, Miller Lite, etc. This is a pretty big area of beer. So if you're into beer, microbreweries, or things from Japan or other countries, this is the place to go to try them, and they sell them in singles. On the other end is the ice cream section, and I find it pretty big. Um, you've got your regular ice creams, but you've also got some interesting brands I've never seen before from the West Coast, uh, such as the Tillamook, Tillamook um, brand. But they also have the ba Big Gige ice cream, which you can find at other stores, but that's one of my favorite ice creams, and the Bubby's Mochi ice cream, which is fantastic if you've never tried it. sections the eggs and dairies and breakfast meats and they have some different types of milk I've never seen at other stores as well yogurts and some juices some are different as well but your typical metal gold and pog and orange juice but there are some different brands in there that I've never tried before This is the seafood section in the refrigerator where you can just pick up food is some smoked marlin, pickled garlic, and as you saw, the fresh um, akule. But to get most of the seafood, you have to go to the um, seafood section where you ask the person to wait by the pound to buy the seafood. But there's a pretty big selection of seafood and it all looks fresh and there's some oysters and sashimi on the side as well. And here's the meat section and it's got different cuts of chicken, pork and beef and a lot of different homemade sausages and chorizos and it almost has the setup of like a Whole Foods which I find pretty cool because it's a local company and at least it's got different selections and more of a local flair than Whole Foods does in terms of their sausages and pre-made meats. So that's chorizo, you've got Portuguese sausage that's homemade, and uh, chicken pesto sausage, you've got bacon wrapped asparagus, some pre-made shish kebabs that are pre-marinated, lots of different items. And here in the middle is that Pauhana bar, which um, serves alcohol and uh, also serves poo-poos. In the middle of that is the Hawaiian section. So you've got the Lao Lao Kalua pig, Lomi salmon and poi. And 
And this is just to show you guys in the mainland how expensive bread is here in Hawaii. So that's generic bread. And some Sara Lee bread. Or wheat's like $5.19. And then this is the brand of Foodland called Maikai. So they've got different syrups. They also have something called Calabash, which is pre-packed meals that you can take home and cook. Has all the ingredients in there. So you've got pork hash loco moco, some pulejo steak, some smothered pork chops, and some spicy beef stir fry. All looked good. Although it was crowded, there's enough registers that were open and I could check out fairly quickly and it wasn't too painful at all. Um, the only thing that sucks about it right now is because of all the hype and the way the parking lot is set up. There is not enough parking in the shopping center and it's even worse because it shares it with other companies and restaurants. So especially on the weekend, good luck finding parking. Uh, I went all the way to TJ Maxx, which is all the way on the other side by Long's, and there was no parking at all. But I got lucky and found some on the side of the entrance. So I don't want to sound like a total lush or anything, but I have a small kitchen. But you get six of these different single beers at Foodland for $10.99. So I got the Deschutes, which is Deschutes Brewery, and it's a playoff how to pronounce their name, because nobody can. Uh, Newcastle Brown Ale, which everybody, it's been out for a long time, but one of my favorite beers, and didn't really want a whole case of it, but nice that they had a single of it. Another Deschutes Little Squeezy Juicy Ale. A Stone Tangerine Express IPA. Uh, Easy Little Thing a IPA from Sierra Nevada, and a local brew, a Gold Cliff IPA from Kona Brewing, which isn't really local. We found out, you know, there was that lawsuit where it's brewed by Buzz Budweiser or whatever main beer it is, beer company it is. Um, but yeah, got all these uh, from Foodland Farms and gonna enjoy one tonight and save the rest for later, but I, I love um, different beers and trying them out in microbrews, but I don't often drink them because of my health, I, I and I gain a lot of weight with beer, so just slowly drink these, if anything, I usually drink um, light beers like Corona Premier just to keep my weight and blood sugar in check, but tonight a treat with this one, the shoots. I'm gonna try this one with my dinner. And this is the um, pre-made, one of the pre-made uh, meals that was at Foodland Farms. I chose the pulehu steak, which in Hawaiian just means um, like barbecued or grilled steak. Comes with a spicy sambal and hamakua mushrooms, which are kind of like a meaty oyster type mushroom from Hamakua in, on the Big Island and we'll open it up and see what's in it. So this is what's in it. Um, we've got half a red onion, a lime, and these are Hamakua mushrooms that I was talking about if you're not from Hawaii. They're very big meaty mushrooms, almost like an oyster mushroom. Uh, got cilantro, I believe, unless it's parsley. No, that's regular parsley. And the spice for the steak, and uh, the steak's on the bottom, and it's sealed. And it kind of looks like, it doesn't say what kind of cut, but it looks to me as if it is a flank steak almost, which is nice. I do like flank steak. If you cut it at a good angle on the bias, it is very tender and delicious. Um, and when you rip it open from the top, you just flip it over and it has the ingredients on how to cook your steak. So, um, that should be easy. Let's cook. So the instructions say to chop it up in small bits. This is the hamakua mushrooms, which like I said earlier, it's like, if you're not from Hawaii, almost like an oyster mushroom. It's very meaty.
and then they give you what appears to be half a shallot, a big shallot, and you chop those up. And then you chop up the Italian parsley fine to sprinkle it towards the end on your meat and mushrooms. There is a seasoning packet that comes with your pulejo steak and all you do is open the bag and rub it on the two pieces of meat that you get in your calabash pack. Heat up some olive oil and fry your meat in the frying pan to your liking. After your meat is done in the same pan, saute your onions with a little bit of oil and then your mushrooms as well. missing from my kit, so I put my own pat of butter in there with my own sriracha sauce. So there it is, the finished product. Hopefully it tastes good because the butter was not included, they forgot it, so I made my own butter. So I'm sure it's not the same, but we'll give it a taste test. So I finished cooking the pulehu steak with the hamakua mushrooms, which is supposed to have the sambal butter, but unfortunately Foodland failed and they did not include it in my pack. And I am way too lazy to drive all the way back there and complain and get another one. So I just put some butter in there and I don't have any sambal. So I just pretty much just put sriracha just to give it some spice and some salt because there were no other spices with it besides for the steak. So gave it some flavor because I don't know what ingredients were in their sambal butter, but let's give it a try. I mean, it looks good.
pretty good. I would say um, to be critical, not to be a bitch or anything, but the spice tastes like a generic steak rub with some kind of almost on the verge of a barbecue rub, which doesn't really appeal to me for steak. Um, for barbecue, we just, I would stick to barbecue. It has a, a little spice to it, like a cayenne, but not too spicy, but I do like spicy, but not spicy in the way that it would hurt your mouth or anything, or people who don't, don't like spicy stuff could probably handle that. Try the mushrooms out with the shallots. Thought it was red onion at first, but apparently they're shallots. That's really good. Um, again, you were supposed to saute the mushrooms and the shallots with the sambal butter, but I just used regular challenge butter. But you can't go wrong with regular butter and onions or shallots. So shallots are very sweet compared to um, just a regular red onion. So that's a win. But the steak, whatever seasoning it came with, this cut is so thick, it didn't really flavor it good to me. And the instructions say to just rub it on and throw it in the plant pan. I would suggest rubbing it on and leaving it to marinade for maybe at least an hour. The spices are not, it's not enough salt on it for me. Appears to be some kind of, I don't know what it is. I thought it was flank steak, something similar to it, but it's a thick cut. So it's not tough, but it's way too thick. So when you cook it, even over the medium heat, some of it's raw like this, which if you like rare, that's great. But the other sides are kind of overdone. So you don't get a consistent cook with this kind of cut when you cut it all kinds of weird ways. Like one of the pieces was like cut slanted and weird. So when you put it in the pan, it's not completely flat. So some sides get the sear and the others don't and you kind of have to maybe flip it over on its side and try to hold it up to cook that side, I suppose. But I mean, overall it's good, but I don't consider this or Pulehu steak does not come to mind eating this with this kind of spice. This is kind of like a, I don't know, like maybe it has like cumin in it or some kind of Southwest kind of taste. So definitely not Hawaiian Pulehu steak flavors coming out to me. And I've been drinking the Deschutes beer from Deschutes Brewery in Bend, Oregon. And this was a good choice. I mean, I kind of just grabbed it. I mean, I've been to the actual brewery in Bend, Oregon a long time ago when I went snowboarding. I stopped by and this is kind of newer because I haven't been, like I said, for a long time. So this is a good pick to go with the steak or any kind of meat. It's a very light beer, very citrusy, very bright. So it cuts through the fat or anything fatty or meaty. So really good beer. If you're into beers, definitely try that and pair it with some kind of meat or barbecue would go really well. So overall, this was $17.99. I don't think it's quite worth it for my taste. Maybe I'm being overly critical. You do get two big pieces of steak, so, you know, I don't waste stuff, so... I will finish it and then I have another steak for lunch tomorrow at work and some mushrooms left so I guess you know it makes two meals or it feeds two people with a normal appetite if you notice I don't have a starch it doesn't come with the starch but that's okay I picked it for that reason because I'm kind of on a keto diet right now um, I'm not strictly keto because I'll cheat here and there obviously to do this vlog so when I do treat myself, I will go eat some starches, but 
when it's an everyday home thing, I kind of just don't eat starch or sweets. Um, I know I'm kind of cheating with the beer, but for me, I don't do it to really lose weight per se. I mean, it's good to lose weight, but I kind of have high blood sugar. So for my health, I just kind of cut out the rice or any kind of starch or noodles or potato. So I guess this is a good meal if you're strictly keto. Um, and it's filling. The other thing at the store was, um, other choices didn't really appeal to me, but the only other one that really appealed to me and I had a difficulty um, choosing which one to get today was the, um, I forgot the exact name, but you know, I filmed it prior, was that uh, spicy stir fry with the beans and um, hot sauce. So um, almost like a Thai stir fry. That looked good, and you know, I'm willing to give second chances, so I go back there and try that one. But um, if you're really set on, you know, when you read the label and you're from Hawaii and you think, ooh, pule husk I don't know, this does not, um, that's not the taste I'm looking for when I hear the word and have tasted real pule steak. This is kind of a little bit very not Hawaii or Hawaiian, kind of very mainlandish steak. Um, even that, I mean, people in the United States know how to make steak, especially, uh, of course, Texas and those parts, but this seasoning doesn't even, yeah, that's, if you're compa comparing steak from the mainland, this totally sucks too. So the seasoning, definitely meh. So that was my vlog of the new Foodland Farms in Pearl City Gateway. Um, and the little mukbang, if you want to call it, um, eating and cooking to show what this steak little um, take-home meal was like and um, my honest opinion, sorry, but not so good. Um, but definitely would go back there when the crowd dies down, if it ever does, because they've got great cuts of steak that you can put your own seasoning on, sausages, obviously, you know, everything that I've shown prior to this that is competitive to Whole Foods. And I would definitely go because, you know, you want to support local business. And it's very comparable to a Whole Foods with their products and um, other, you know, beers, wines, candies, and things you can't find. And they've got their, you know, own branding of the Makai brand. So definitely support local, other than unfortunately this little kit to make it home, the rest of um, the food land farms in Pearl City totally impressed me. So definitely go there. I would suggest for now, because it's new and everything in Hawaii gets blown out of proportion because everybody gets excited, maybe wait a little bit to go. And if you're really, really wanting to go, then you're gonna have to fight some traffic and um, it's really hard to find parking. I went all the way to the side of um, AutoZone and Longs and TJ Maxx, totally packed today, no parking at all. So I feel bad for people trying to get to Longs to get their medication or other places in that shopping center because there is no parking and I think it's because of Foodland Farms. So wait a little bit and then let the hype die down. But I would definitely recommend going there. Um, going to the bar. I did not sit there today, but I've been to the one in Ala Moana. They have a great menu. I don't know if the cook is the same there or the products are the same there that they offer, but good menu, good wines, and it's a calm vibe with, you know, TVs to watch if there's sports on or whatnot. Uh, go with a friend and enjoy over there, and we'll see you on another Food Fiend vlog on the next adventure. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And I'll take you to another place next time. Peace out.